Hey guys, welcome to the show today. Uh, we're getting into really the plan of what to do in 2019 in social media. Things have changed. The way to capture leads and business from social media has completely changed. So if you're using your social media account to basically just generate cold leads that have never heard of you before besides a quick social media post, you're doing things wrong. And today we're gonna talk about building a plan and really how to structure your content in a way that converts clients into closed business that allows you to capture referrals and more business from social media media than you ever thought possible. So let's go check out the show. I hope you guys enjoy it and share this with somebody who you think could benefit from getting onto social media in 2019. We'll see you in the show. Hey guys, and happy Friday. Welcome to the show. We've got some new things coming. I got a new mic today, so hopefully that prevents any of our audio issues. We've been having a couple issues with our mic, and uh, we're ready to roll today. So happy Friday. My name is Eric Hammond of the Orange Stack. Thanks for joining us every week as we go live on the show, 10 a.m. Pacific, and we uncover how to use social media in your life, how to grow your real estate business, and just how to do more. We've got a lot of motivational videos and uh, doing some fun stuff. So the weather's a little inclement today. We're gonna shoot it indoors, so we're in our office, and today, we're going to talk about the thing that you probably hear all the time everywhere you go and it's you got to be on social media so we're going to help you guys come up with a 2019 plan for social media and how to use it more in your business as a real estate agent i talk to so many agents every single week several times a day tons throughout the month we coach classes we teach different events we do lunches all this kind of thing so as a past real estate agent for many years and one who's helped manage a successful team i've got some ideas for you guys to implement in 2019 to help your business just take off this year and do more things. So the thing that I'm seeing most of you guys do, the things that most agents go through is they're looking for leads, right? Whether it's through Zillow or Realtor.com or any other online lead gen platform, that's how they treat social media. They think that if I put this post out there, it's going to generate heaps of leads, you know, for several dollars of leads or down to pennies a lead. And what happens is you're going to get a name, you're going to get a phone number, you're going to e get an email address potentially from someone you've never met. And that's obviously what a lead is. And when you're going through the Zillow route, that makes sense. You got to buy multiple leads. You're going to know your numbers. You're going to close at a certain ratio. I talked to a uh, Zillow the other day. He said on average, most agents close about 1% of the leads that they buy from us. So there's to know your numbers. But if you're going to be doing that with Zillow, you can't do that with social media. I'm talking about Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, if you're still using Snapchat, all that kind of stuff, okay? So what do I do different on social media than I would do with a general lead? Obviously, if the lead's coming through Zillow or one of these platforms, you're gonna have them come into your CRM, you're gonna have an instant follow-up, right? You have to respond to these guys like, like that, like on the dot, because they're looking for information, they're searching for things. If they can't find it from you, they're gonna go somewhere else. So you have to be Johnny on the spot to get back to these leads instantly. And again, it's just providing what they're looking for. You know, if they're looking for a certain property, here it is. If I wanna go see a house, I'll be there in 10 minutes kind of a thing. So you gotta to respond to these leads pretty quick. The other side of it, when you're on social media, is it's more about building the brand. And I think that's where most of you are missing, the, the mark. So. What do businesses do online to build their brand? They bring value, they share content, they deliver what the clients are looking for before they even realize what they're looking for. I just realized I don't even have my glasses on today. This is crazy. We normally do our show with my orange sunglasses, but today we're inside the Sonoma orange sunglasses. There's my brand. I build my brand, it's called the Orange Stack. We have orange in all our videos, so that's how we build our brand. How do you build your brand as a real estate agent? So think about what it is that you know, that you understand that separates you from everybody else in real estate. Obviously, anybody can go stick a sign in their front yard and put for sale by owner, get an offer, negotiate for themselves, go to the title company, close without the real estate agent. So why are you involved? If I'm a buyer, I can go work with this for sale by owner. I can go talk to other listing agents. I can go negotiate on my own. Why do I need you as a buyer's agent? So what separates you? That's the first thing, first thing to ask. What separates you from every other real estate agent out there? And what separates you from the homeowner who just lists their house for sale by owner? I know the answer, do you? What are you doing in your life to separate yourself, okay? So think about the value that you represent as a real estate agent. Is it just that you have access to the MLS? I hope not. I hope there's something else that you offer besides that. I think what most people are looking for in an agent is somebody unique who's gonna do things different than everybody else. Oftentimes it's, I want the cheapest option to sell my house, right? I wanna do it for less than 1%. I wanna do it for 1%. I wanna do it for $500, whatever it is, that's great. If that's what people want and you choose to give it to them, great. But I think that you can charge the full 3% on your end or the full 6% that a normal listing requires. And you're thinking, how do I keep up with technology? How do I do the things that all these other platforms out there are doing cheaper than me? 
You gotta bring value as a human being, as a real estate agent that nobody else can bring. So again, what is it that you know, that you understand that you can do that nobody else can do? Is it your negotiating skills? Is it your knowledge of contractors? Is it your years of experience of being in the real estate field and knowing the ins and outs of the transaction and the pages of the contract? In California, we have a super long contract because of all the issues and things that have come up. Are you able to understand every single page of that and explain it to your buyer or to your seller how this works and what box you wanna check and how you wanna fill this out when you buy a property how you take title that matters right so think about the knowledge that you have real estate agent and what's going to happen through this transaction that you can provide that value to your client in a professional manner so for example a lot of homes in my area sell people live in them for you know 10 15 20 years before they sell sometimes the average home ownership length is about 13 years in my area which means people are gonna buy the house, they probably fix it up at the beginning, maybe somewhere in the middle, and then several years later when they go to sell, things are falling apart. The roof might need to be replaced, the water heater might be going out, the furnace might be old, carpet's probably worn out, it might need to be retouched up on the paint, it probably needs to be staged because their furniture is all over the place and people have smaller homes and they have a lot of stuff so it's kind of congested. You know, when they go out in the garage, you can't even fit a car in the garage. So. These are the things that are gonna help be fixed and repaired and changed when you go to sell a house. So if you're an agent and you have these connections with roofers and plumbers and flooring and painters and stagers, and you bring this value to your client as a real estate agent when they go to sell their house, they know or you know that you're gonna sell that house for more money by working with you. So it's totally gonna pay for that 3% commission that you're charging. Now, how do I bring this to social media? Probably wondering how it all ties together. Social media is a platform like none other. There's never been a better place to get your message across. In the past, you'd have to create a commercial on TV. You'd have to write a magazine article. You'd have to print and publish materials. You'd have to put ads in the newspaper. You'd have to have a billboard on the freeway. You'd have to go speak at live events where people are gathered. Now, most people spend hours on their phone every single day. It's the first thing they grab in the morning. It's the last thing they look at before they go to bed. And in between, they're looking at it all day long. If you've ever looked at the new app that came out on the iPhone that monitors your usage and seeing how much time you use the phone per day, guarantee it's a lot higher than you expected and it's probably true for everyone that you're going to work with so where are all the eyeballs they're on their phones they're looking at their social media apps they're searching online they're reading they're going to websites they're looking for your content and you just don't even put it in front of them so that's the beauty of what social media offers is it allows you to be in their pocket in front of their eyes morning noon night early in the mornings late at night you can be there all the time You don't have to try to get in front of them in these obscure ways anymore. You have the chance to get in front of them for super low costs. Remember the days of a billboard, how much it costs to do that? Or remember the days of having to advertise on the radio? Or if you ever thought about being on a commercial for TV, how much that could have cost? Now for pennies on the dollar, pennies, pennies on the dollar, you can get in front of your clients week after week after week after week sharing content in front of them. One of our best promotional videos uh, we had running, we, we average anywhere from 5 to $10 per day for a lot of our ads uh, just because it works and that's all we need to spend. Some, some of you guys will spend hundreds of dollars a week, which works and it gets in front of the right people, but your cost per impression can be down to under a penny and it's incredible versus the cost of sending out a postcard or a letter or the time and effort that it's going to take to go door knock somebody, right? So your cost to get in front of exactly who you're looking for has never been less. They call it CPM. Um, CPM basis is cost per thousand impressions. It's around $8 to $10 right now. It used to be like two, $3. It's going up. So the cost of being on Facebook and Instagram and all these things have gone up a lot, but related to everything else, the related to a cost of a stamp, which actually went up again today, much, much more affordable. The other thing to understand is that you have to go work with your title company to pull all the addresses for mail to find out, you know, who's selling, who's owner, who's renting, how old are they? How long have they lived there? When did this house recently sell? gathering all that information, keeping it up to date versus Facebook just following you everywhere you go. Google, knowing exactly what web pages you go to, how to get in front of them all the time makes it easy. Your audience is always being updated in the background so that you don't have to worry about it. You can pick out the demographics that make sense to work with. So who do you target on social media? You know, you used to be able to target people who are expecting to move soon, people own their house for a certain length of time, all sorts of things that they've kind of gotten rid of. So you kind of got to be a little bit sneaky and work around the bush. You got to focus on the things that you understand about people. You know, if people are looking for new roofs, maybe they're they're thinking about upgrading the roof and selling. I keep using roofs, but it's just a good example. Roofs have to be changed a lot of times to sell a house because a company, a mortgage lender won't lend on an old roof. We dealt with a lot uh, a lot with that in the winter when we lived in Utah for a while because lenders don't want the curling roofs that are having issues. So the point is, is to 
share content on a regular basis. We do this show live every Friday morning, 10 a.m. Pacific, because I know it reaches the audience that we're looking for. We target real estate agents because that's who we work with. I'm trying to teach you guys how to use social media. I'm trying to teach you how to grow your business as a real estate agent and as a business owner. So for a few dollars a week, I can get in front of thousands, tens of thousands of agents every single week. And it reminds you guys what I do. It reminds you guys that I've been in real estate, that I've sold houses, that I understand social media and that I can coach you guys on how to do this too. So find your audience, create your content in a way like this that they can easily digest it. You guys are on Facebook, that's why I'm talking to you. I have my YouTube audience, I have my Instagram audience, I have my LinkedIn audience. I know how to reach the people that I'm looking for and I put content that they can digest in these areas and to make it easy for them to understand. So understanding where your demographic is. Are the people that you're working with 20 to 40 years old? Are they 40 to 60 years old? Are they 60 and up because they're downsizing and they're out and they're done with their house and they're just, you know, wanting to rent or live out their life in a retirement home or something like that. Understanding where your audience is. Are they on Instagram? Are they on YouTube? Are they on Facebook? Are they reading blogs and articles? Where are they? And then being able to communicate with them in that way, that's how you win. So create your audience, understand who you're talking to, understand the pains and the problems that they have right now. Again, do they have an old dated house? Are they having kids and needing to go from that townhouse to a single family house? Are they trying to get rid of the two-story house and go to a single level house? Where are they in their moment of their life right now that you can speak to them and give them the counsel, the guidance, the value that they're looking for, okay? So once you understand their demographic, create content around them. Each week, this is what you guys need to be in. So hopefully you got your pen out. You saw the little note that says, get your pen out, take some notes, okay? Get your pen out, write these down. Create something every single week, whether it's on Fridays, Mondays, Saturdays, Tuesdays, it doesn't matter. Understand when your audience is online and that's when you need to make content. I know a lot of you guys are getting ready for the weekend. You have your open houses coming up. Friday mornings, 10 a.m. is our best time to do this show. That's why I do it live. We have a bunch of people coming in and out watching this piece. Right now, we have a lot of live views. As we go, you guys are gonna digest this content. This whole next week, you guys are gonna digest this content and more and more views are gonna come in. So what you can do is create content on a weekly basis consistency is the key here. So if you're gonna do it Monday at eight o'clock, do it Monday at eight o'clock every single week after week after week. Pick your day, understand your time, and then advertise that content for just a couple bucks a day to your audience so that they see you, so they recognize your face, they see your smiling face, they see the content that you're gonna share. Have some good captioning in the description above where you can title the video like I did. I put the sirens in there today. Have something that's gonna catch your eye, stop scrolling, and wanna engage with your content. And then understand who's watching, right? So from here, I can see who's watched three seconds of this video, 10 seconds of this video, 15 seconds of this video, all the way to 25, 50% of the video, 75% of the video. I think the next one is 90, 95, and 100. So I can target anybody along that line who's watched any piece of this information and put more content in front of them. So if you're willing to stick around for 10, 15, 20 minutes of my video, and you're willing to watch 50% of it or more, I think you're probably a pretty good candidate to engage with what we're sharing and be able to learn more about what we do. And so we're gonna put more offers in front of you. You know, Schedule a consultation call with us. Find out how you can use social media in your business. Find out about some of the programs that we offer, some of the things that we sell, some of the advice that we give, some of the um, lunches that we're putting on, things like that. So as you have your audience and they engage with your content and you provide content on a weekly basis, follow up with them. I think I missed a step. What do you put in front of them? I talked a little bit about content. Every week, find someone or something to share, right? So maybe you interview another contractor. Maybe you've got your plumber right here and you're saying, you know, Steve the plumber, tell us about water heaters in today and how much they cost to put in and what's going on with them and are there any upgrades that you can recommend and how do I save money with my utilities because of my water heater? Should I go to a tankless water heater? Should I stick with the 40 gallon? Should I look into solar? Is electric best? Is gas best? right? What am I going to be doing? Talk about furnace upgrades. Talk about efficiencies. Talk about insulation. Talk about the roof. You're helping your clients understand that you know homes. So many real estate agents get into the business because they think they're in sales and they are. They're selling the product. They're selling their home. But you're also this vast source of knowledge. You guys are going to learn more about the home, its makeup, its construction, and everything about it than you ever thought possible. I came from a construction background. I went to school in construction management. I understand how to manage really big projects, anywhere from 80 to $300 million jobs. I built some big buildings in San Jose, California. I've remodeled for Apple, Cisco, amazing companies. Um, but what it taught me is that there's a lot of moving pieces. There's a lot of parts to construction that most people don't understand. And so as me being the real estate agent coming into your world who lives in a home that's probably dated or thinking about buying a dated home or wanting to approve a home, 
I'm a huge resource to them. Think about your clients. If you sold them a house and then afterwards they say, you know, we really love this area. The kitchen's a little worn out. We'd love to do some things to it. Who do you know that could help us remodel our kitchen so it can be a safer place for our kids and that my wife and I can cook or however that conversation comes up. And you say, you know what? I've got a great kitchen designer. She does this, this, and this. She'd love to talk to you for a couple minutes and see what your needs are. I've got a cabinet guy who can get you custom cabinets built and installed within three or four weeks. I've got a painter who can come in. I've got an appliance guy. You know, Home Depot's great. They offer discounts counts, but I know this guy who can beat his prices too. Think about the value that would be to your clients. They're going to love working with you and they're going to give out your name and referral to everybody that they know because they're going to say, hey, my agent was phenomenal. They got us this screaming deal in this house. They showed us how to upgrade the kitchen. They put us in um, contact with contractors. They allowed us to build our dream home. If you're ready to buy a house, you should call him too or her. That's how this works. So as you share this content on a weekly basis, keep going, keep interviewing your contractors, keep interviewing the real estate professionals in your life, the mortgage lender, the title company, the real estate insurance, all the people that you know, like, and trust that are going to be comfortable in front of the camera who can stare at the lens and smile and have a conversation and not feel awkward. Get a nice mic like the one that we got this week. We just upgraded our mic to a Rode mic. If you want more information, send me a direct message about that. Audio is probably the biggest thing that you guys need to upgrade in your videos. And interview the person in that video, the contractor, the professional, share this content with your audience. Don't expect to try to sell anything. Don't wrap it up at the end of the video saying, if you want a list of homes in your area or when you're ready to sell your house, reach out to me. Just give the advice for free. Have a call to action at the end that says, if you'd like more information about upgrading your water heater, give Steve here a call. Here's his number that brings value to Steve and it brings value to your audience, but don't make it about you. Understand that when you're sharing content, you want to share it in a matter that's beneficial to the audience something that they're going to benefit. That's why everything that I'm sharing here is going to help you in your business. It's not helping me. By me teaching you how to be on social media, it's taking away business from me. We started our business with the plan of helping agents build their business, that we would do all the effort for them, that we would create the content, that we would create the landing pages, that we would do everything for them. But now we just show you how to do it so that you guys can take over your marketing and run your business the way that you want to do and share the content that you need to make. It helps you. It takes away our business, but it helps you in the end because I know that there's plenty of you out there who can't afford our fees but who still need to do something. There's so many real estate agents out there who are using social media in the wrong way. And I'm here to show you guys how to do it the right way, how to take business from social media, how to take business from online in today's market. It's not about buying a lead for a dollar or two. I know there's plenty of people who are doing it and they're still selling houses and it's great, but that's changing. And the cost of leads are going up and the value of these leads are going down. So by you building your brand and actually having a name behind what it is that you do and people understanding that you're in the business to sell homes, not just buy leads, you're going to win. So create this content, distribute it, follow up the people that watch your content, put the call to actions in later. Gary V says, jab, 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 right hook. That means provide value five times before you ever ask for a sell. So bring more value, share more knowledge, give out more advice, and then ask them to buy. Don't tell them it's time to buy. Invite them to an open house that you have. Invite them to learn more about investing in real estate. Invite them to have you over to talk about their home and the potential value that it has and what options that they have coming up, okay? That's the way to do it. Bring value first. Focus on that. Guys, that's my message for you today. There's so much more that you can get into, but social media is a pretty simple place. It's easy for you guys to understand. It takes an iPhone or an Android or whatever camera phone that you have, stick it on a tripod like mine, get a good mic like this and start producing content. And if you're not comfortable with the camera, don't do the camera because it's going to be awkward. Start writing, start typing with your fingers, get content out there that way. But if you can figure out video, you're always going to win because video is the king nowadays. Get comfortable with video if you can. Do video weekly. Get in the habit of doing it. This is my newsletter. This is the way that I speak to my audience. This is the way that I communicate with them. So guys, I appreciate you being here. I know this has kind of been a a longer one, but I think that it's going to bring you the value that you're looking for. So let me have you make a commitment this year to be on social media in 2019 in a different way that you've been doing. Stop posting open houses. Stop posting just just listed, stop posting just sold, stop bragging about what you're doing as a real estate agent and talk to the client as a client in value that you're bringing. Talk to them in the way that they want to receive this information. Tell them what they're looking for. Talk to them about how their pool needs to be upgraded. Talk to them about their roof. Talk to them about their carpet. Talk to them about staging, designing, getting their house ready to be sold. Bring them the value that they're looking for. And even if it's out there ways for them to sell, 
bring them what they're looking for and you'll truly get business in this way. Guys, I appreciate you being here. Thanks for following along as we go through this live every single week. My name is Eric Hammond of Orange Stack. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow and share this with somebody who you know needs to be on social media this year. Thanks guys. We'll see you on the next one.